We are going to continue our discussion on how to build multimodal rag systems. In the previous video, we looked at different architectures that are possible for building a multimodal rag application, which combine both images as well as text data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an end-to-end -end system using GPT-4 or and Llama Index. This is going to be an extension of our previous video. Now, here is how the architecture is going to look like for uh, this specific case. So first, we're going to collect data. Again, this is going to be a combination of both text and images. For text, we're going to chunk those, create a separate text uh, vector store. We'll take each image separately, run them through an embedding model, which is going to be a clip model again in this case, and create an image vector store. During user query time, we're going to process the query uh, and compute embeddings for it. And then we'll do retrieval based on the text vector store as well as on the image vector store. We will combine them together to augment the context uh, for our LLM, which is gpt 40 in this case, and that will generate responses which are going to be returned to the user. So here's a quick overview of how this video is going to look like. So first we'll simply talk about multimodal rack system. Then we'll talk about the setup installation, how to prepare the environment, in this case, I'm using Google Colab Notebook, but you can run this on your local machine as well. Then we'll quickly talk about data collection and preparation, and then how to create multimodal index indices based on both images as well as text. Then we will implement a multimodal retrieval pipeline, which is going to be retrieving both images as well as text chunks based on the user query, and we're going to wrap everything around in a single pipeline that was going to use GPT-40 to generate responses. So in the multimodal RAG system, you combine both text and image data to enhance the capabilities of the large language models. So there are four uh, different steps, very similar to the traditional RAG systems. So the first one is indexing, where we combine both image and text data and store them in uh, separate vector stores. I'll also show you how you can use the uh, multimodal model like GPT-40 to generate description of images that can potentially be uh, combined uh, with the uh, text chunks uh, to augment uh, your vector store. Then you do retrieval. So basically uh, the user provides a query and you retrieve both the text and images that are relevant to your query. And then after that, we do augmentation. So the retrieved information is used to augment the input to the LLM and the LLM will generate a response based on the augmented input plus the user query. Okay, so let's talk about the setup. We will be again installing the clip model. This model is going to be used to generate the text, the image embeddings in our case. We'll use OpenAI for our LLM. Quadrant is going to be the vector store because we're looking at a multimodal vector store and quadrant is one of the vector stores that supports both image as well as text data. If you're looking for another alternative, Chroma DB is another open source vector store that supports both. So that can be an option. And we will also install some other packages that are going to be just auxiliary packages. Okay, so first we need to import the packages that we will need. We need to set up our OpenAI API key I am again using Google Colab Notebook Secrets. And actually, the person who implemented this needs an award because I think this makes life so easy. Now, after that, we are creating a couple of different folders. So one is input images. This is a folder that is going to contain some of the input images that I'm going to provide. As an example, we're going to see like how you can use GPT-4 or to generate descriptions. Then another folder that we are creating is called Mixed Wiki. This will contain both images as well as text that we are going to be reading from a Wikipedia page. So first we check if those folders do not exist. This script is going to generate or create those folders for you. Now to show you how you can use GPT-40 to generate description of images, we are going to download uh, a number of different images. So this these are images um, related to different uh, Tesla vehicles. Actually, these are, I think all of them are related to Model Y. So for example, there are different configurations of Model Y and these images have the specs for different configurations. So this one is performance, 
I think the first one was long range and you can see there are information related to the weight class what is the speed and I think also the pricing is here on this this specific image now this small script will just display all the images contained in a folder so these are the images that we looked at now the first example that I'm going to show you is how to use GPT-40 to generate description for each of these images and you can use these descriptions as text chunks and put them in your vector storm we're not going to do that that in this specific video but in a subsequent video I'm going to show you how you can perform that process so here we're providing the input images folder which contains all the images that we downloaded and then we're using the OpenAI multimodal function from Llama Index so they have written a function that simply wraps GPT-4 or the OpenAI API for multimodal applications so the first prompt is simply generate detailed text description for each image so basically it takes one image at a time by reading those images from the directory and feed it into the LLM to generate responses for those so here is a detailed response to so image number one I think this is one related to the specs so basically it seems like it did OCR on the image and generated a text response the second one is structural diagram of the vehicle this was the think this specific diagram so based on the diagram it generated a description of what it sees in the image right so normally if you're using if you're running these images through a multimodal model, model like gpt 40 you can use these text description as text chunks to augment your existing uh, vector store but uh, for the purpose of this specific video we're going to be sticking to using clip to generate embeddings uh, and that's going to be useful retrieval purposes then we have this helpful function that is going to download images from Wikipedia pages so in this case I am providing links to different articles in on Wikipedia uh, so for example this uh, Tesla model XY uh, then Kia Rivian so these are different electric vehicle we want to get the information regarding all of those we uh, run that script and we will download images as well as the text from those Wikipedia articles now in my case I was running into this too many requests so you could potentially add a small pause or that will uh, probably help you not getting into this specific error but I was able to download some of the images so we can look at some of them for example this uh, this seems to be I think model s and it downloaded data for Rivian uh, model S, X, and uh, we're going to also download a 10K form for Tesla. So here, a track that Rivian is creating for Amazon. So there are both Rivian images as well as Tesla images. We have the images. We're going to create two different vector stores and then combine them together using a multimodal vector store. So the first one is going to be for text and the second one is going to be for image. We're going to be using Quadrant, as I said. So we create the quadrant client. Then uh, if you're trying to uh, create a multimodal vector store using quadrant, you just need to provide uh, the names of two collections. So we create one collection for text. The second collection is for images. So think about these are two different tables in your database. One belongs to the text chunks and the other belongs to uh, your images. Since we're using Llama index, so we will need to create a storage context if you're not familiar with this idea I have a couple of videos on Llama index which really explains the concepts so I'm going to put links to those storage context basically contains all the information regarding where to store your vector store what type of embeddings to use what are going to be the chunk size and so on and so forth so we uh, load the data from this mixed wiki directory that contains both text as well as the image data and then we create a multimodal vector store based on all the documents that are contained the storage context is going to be the one that we created using both the image as well as the text collection so this basically combines embeddings of both the text as well as your images next we will create a rank pipeline now we'll uh, in the first part we're going to just look at what kind of retrieved context we are seeing 
and then in the next part we're going to feed it into the LLM to generate our final responses. So we need to set up some hyperparameter for our index for retrieval. So we take that index, create a retrieval on top of it, and we say that for every query it's supposed to return the top three text chunks and the top three images that it can find which are similar to the query that the user is providing. So we write a helpful function which basically takes that retriever gets the user query and we're just inputting only the top 50 tokens you don't really need to put this but the, this was just to show you like for extremely long user queries you can put how many tokens you want to process this will just help you save some money all right so we get the retrieve results now the retrieve results are going to have two different parts one is going to be text chunks and the second one is going to have images so we take or separate both of them. So here we are looking at the images and putting them into retrieved images list. And the second part is the text that we are going to be displaying, right? And if there are images, then we just show those images, right? So here is a simple prompt. What is the best electric sedan? And you can see that these are three chunks that are retrieved by the text embeddings. So the first one is the Tesla Model S is battery electric executive car with a lift back body style built by tesla the second one talks about model x which is not a sedan but if you look at the images it only retrieved images of model s which is pretty good because we are specifically talking about a sedan so in the last step we can just take all this context put it put it together and feed it into gpt4 to generate a final response so here is how it looks like. We will be using prompt template and in that prompt template, we say that, okay, context information is below. So this is the context that the model is going to get. And then given the context information and not prior knowledge, answer the query. So we, we, we ask it to answer the specific query that the user is providing. Now, in this case, we also want to run both the images through this whole process. So we're going to create uh, a prompt template. Then we are going to run that prompt template on the index that we created. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using GPT-4 or as our multimodal uh, model. So again, keep in mind that this is not the normal GPT-4 O, uh, but the multimodal version that Llama index implements. So it's going to receive both the images as well as the text to generate the final response. So this pipeline now receives the user query and the LLM along with the context that is going to be retrieved by our index. When we run our query on the query engine that we just created, we're going to get a response. And then we also look at what images were retrieved as part of the context. So we're going to display those as well. So here I am asking it to compare the design features of Tesla Model S and Rivian R1. So the responses that you are going to get are going to be based on the text as well as the images that are retrieved. So here it talks about Tesla Model S, so the body style, powertrain, and design evolution, range, interiors, additional information, and it looks at the exact same features for Rivian R1 as well. And I think at the end it gives us a small comparison or summary of whatever it has found. So it says that Model S is a sedan which is focused on performance, range, and luxury, whereas the R1 or R1S are designed as a pickup truck and SUV, respectively, with a focus on versatility, off-road capabilities, and utility. Now we can also so look at the uh, sources, so basically the text chunks that were retrieved, as well as the images. In this case, it only retrieved two images. One is that of Rivian. Uh, R1 and the second one is Model X and the second one is Model S. Now for this specific project we combined both images as well as uh, text chunks and created an end-to-end -end, uh, rag system or rag pipeline. Now you can further improve the, this uh, by using um, agentic rag. That's going to be a topic of our subsequent video. So we're going to look at how to create agents that can perform um, uh, rag for you that's extremely helpful in situations in which you cannot uh, find the answer in a single shot. Uh, so for example, in the first case, if it's not able to retrieve the proper chunks, then the agent is going to do a second pass of retrieval by changing the prompt. So 
that will change the retrieved context and it can also look at how good the responses or the chunks are before generating final responses. So I'm going to be creating some videos around how to do agentic RAG. I think that's going to be a topic which you will find extremely helpful. Now, there are a number of different approaches that we can uh, take when it comes to multimodal RAG, and I'm going to be building a lot more content on, on this. Uh, I still think RAG is one of the most practical applications of LLM, and that is being used in industry more widely than compared to anything else, for example, agents. Agent, the concept of agents is great, but it's not there yet. So if you are interested in RAG agents or anything related to LLMs, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.